So we're fortunate enough to have been joined today by Charles Jardine here at Farlow's. Welcome Charles. Thank you. Um, Charles, you're heading down to New Zealand next week, yeah, I believe. I know. It's frighteningly um, near. But frighteningly far as well. I suppose. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> going to be, a, I think, one of the longest longest hauls I've ever done. You know, I'm used to going to America, but crikey. So you, you popped in to see us to, to, mm. to pick up a few bits. And yeah. Tell us first of all, Charles, what, you, what you're up to down there. Well, um, it was a chance conversation with Dave Grove, um, who's been looking after the England Commonwealth team for a long time. And I was part of it years ago, mm. but um, more recently I, I dropped because, you know, quite frankly, work's got so busy. Um, and I thought, I'm fed up with saying no. You know, th there comes a point in life when you just go, I'm not going to say no anymore, I'm going to say a lot more yes. And I, we were at the game fair and I just said, okay, I'm in. Fantastic. And um, yeah, it was on the spur of the moment. So, so you're competing or are you, well, sort of you guiding see, the team, mentoring? No, not really. Well, I don't know. I'm sort of ending up being the collator. I feel like the museum scribe at the moment. But um, I mean, I want to fight for my, I'm a competitive beast. I mean, I can't. Glossy, I've seen you on a river, Charles. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I no hate fish being the world. Well, I think they do, <laughs> but I, I, I really don't. You know, I, I want to fish, and I want to fish to my maximum capability. And um, so, whether I can fight for my place in the team back again, I don't know. But it's been an absence, and it wouldn't be fair, really, to ooze, ooze someone out mm. who's who's you know worked very hard to get in that team. So at which part of New Zealand do you visit? It's on the North Island. Right, okay. Yeah. And it's your first time It's my down first there? ever. Uh, so it's going to be a, a learning curve, even, oh, for, crikey, even yeah. for someone like I mean, yourself. Alex was really helpful, my son. Yeah. Um, he's been out there and he was out there during the World Championships. But, you know, I've got to say, and this is a big shout out to John Horsey. I mean, John's been down there several times and everyone knows in the angling community how good John really is. Mm. He's, a, he's a breathtakingly good angler. And he's been so helpful with his advice that I feel reasonably okay. I mean, I'm still this that trepidation that you go, oh, I don't know if I'm making the right decision here. Um, but, but I am excited. I'm yeah. nervous and that's that lovely sort of tantalizing nervous excitement. So we're going to head upstairs into the shop. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a look at some rods, reels, lines, whatever we can find, and, uh, and hopefully you're going to pick out a few things that, that you think might be useful. Well, I've been for your given trip. some steers. Mm. So, yeah, I've been given some ideas of where I should be going. I mean, the one thing is bring strong twang. Right, that's the note that was given to you. That was the note. That was the note. Bring strong twang. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they need to tip it. If, yeah. if it's something else, I've got this very badly wrong. Well, should we pop upstairs and yeah, see what twang we can find? Yeah, let's do it. Right, Charles, so first uh, first piece of the puzzle, Ross, yeah, you've Rods. brought me over to the sage stand here. Well, we could have gone over to, um, well, a number of them, but we could have gone to Scott, we could have gone to Mackenzie, um, we could have gone to any one of them. But the one thing, Johnny, I've learned is that you, you don't have any surprises. If you're going for go with something that you know. Mm. I know the sage range reasonably well, but I did try out the other weekend and I went, oh, goodness, this is going to be perfect. This is a new igniter. Right, okay. Now, yeah. All right, it yeah. sounds like a bit of a promo shout, <laughs> but it's not. I mean, it's an eminently fast but fishable fly rod. And that's an, well, it sounds almost like an oxymoron, but it, it really does. It works incredibly well. Now, the one I looked at is nine foot six yeah. for a six week. Now, okay. that sounds incredibly heavy because normally I use threes or fours or whatever it happens to be. But I, I always air to the lighter end. But I want a rod that's going to do big nymphs on right. rivers for big, tough trout, but also double up for still water as well. Mm, okay. And I, I figured that this, in conjunction, with a variety of lines might do me well. Okay. I mean, I'll have backups, of course, I yeah, will. Yeah. But this one. But as a general purpose. As a general purpose rod. Um, and so why nine foot six? I've just got that extra reach. Okay. It's the same thing. We Is that for men? Will, will you be having to mend? I don't know. Okay, I don't but know. it'll give you the flexibility. But also, if I'm fishing from a boat, I've just got that little bit of extra reach to hold and hang, which yeah. I love to do. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't matter the wild fish or stock fish. You know, you can just hold it and just literally figure of eight and just hold it and boom. 
So for so nymphs, nymphs, dry dries, yeah, the streamers, whole lot, streamers, a whole lot. Yeah. So something, a, yeah. a weapon to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, normally I'd say, all right, nine and a half for ten foot for a four. Mm. But being given the advice that I have, I'm going to go up a couple of line sizes and say, look, this is, I think, going to be as good a standard size rod as I can get. Right, Charles, we had a little look at rods. Yeah. We've got to put a reel on it. Yeah. So This is my nemesis right here. <laughs> it, no, I'm not joking. Look, look, look. look. We look. Have got a, we've got a fair bit of choice for you. Yeah. But, but what, you, what would you be looking for with a reel for, for this trip to New Zealand? Okay, uh, what, what it's got to stop fish. I mean, that's the one thing I've been told. I mean, Horsey was absolutely adamant. You need a reel, that, you need stuff that will stop fish. Mm. So in a their tracks. strong drag, strong drag, but also if they're going on mad runs, you need you, something smooth. But I, I need something with what we call low start-up inertia, which means you don't get that. It's quite difficult to explain, but when you rotate a reel at speed, there'll be that. Ooh, it's almost like getting a little hiccup mm. after a meal, and that's what you call you know. Uh, so when the fish at, suddenly, ch suddenly charges changes off. speed or changes direction, you, want you don't. To, you want that smoothness. Yeah. And that's why people invest so much in saltwater reels mm. because you you reduce that. Okay. So you you take away because that little jolt can very often unleash a hook hole or put an extra bit of strain on or, your tip or whatever. Or but you suddenly get that. Yeah. So we want to eliminate that. Now. We, we tried a few, we did the sort of spin test, if you mm. like, and oddly enough, and I've never thought about Ross reels, ever. I mean, we've got the Sage ones here, we've got Hardies, we've got all sorts of beautiful things. Um, all this down here, the T-ball, which I've always used for bone fish. Mm. Some nice lambs. But this well. one caught my eye, and the reason I like this was quite simply, you were showing me this, is mm. that. On the drag, yeah, I love that. Just do it with your whole palm. Just do it with so the palm. In the heat of the moment, yeah. you're not fiddling but around. But you see, a... there, it's lovely and smooth. Right. And it's light. Yeah. And you know, for me, the killer point in this one is it's not shiny. Right. Okay. And the one thing that's been driven home to me is camouflage, camouflage, camouflage. So. So clear like, water, of course. Clear water. Oh, oh, oh. Probably well, clear water. And also, I rather like that handle. Mm. It's not going to slip. But that, I'm interested why you make the point of that glare. So, well, so I suppose you're you're going to be wading. You're going to be in amongst the fish. I'm going to fish, be in a boat. Gonna... I'm going to be all sorts of things. So what I don't want is something that's it's going to be like you know, you know th those 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 old movies where you get people sort of signifying a mirror, you know, from a hill. Um, you don't want that. Yeah. So. You know, that's going Anything to, be good. to give you the best chance of, yeah, of I just staying want, concealed. I want to fish. load the dice in my favour, not the fishes. So, rod, reel, reel. got to put a line on it. Yeah. What are you looking for in a line for this trip then, Chuck? You've already mentioned well, that the rod, we want it to do nymphs, dries, maybe some bigger stuff. So. Yeah. You need payload, which means you probably want airing to the heavier side of, of a taper. Okay. And most, most a more front focused yeah, taper. But even extending line in, in the back car, so you want a longish taper. Right. Um, so most modern lines do that. Okay. Um, so a weight forward. Yeah, most weight forwards are sort of an extended weight forward now, you know, to combat or compensate for the very fast rods that have come on and uh, uh, mm. pretty much vogue now. So you could easily have gone for the Rio, that's so popular. Yeah, the Rio Gold um, there. The, and that's nicely matte. We'll come on to that in a second. Yeah. But you know what? I, you I, mentioned one particular line. Yeah, line. that. And I've heard good things from people in New Zealand about this. They like this. There's a bit of elasticity in these that isn't in this series, in the InTouch series. And I think when you're talking about big fish, sometimes that little bit of elasticity does help cushion. Just a little bit of... Yeah, just a little bit of give. And you mentioned, the, and I suppose this carries on from what we were just talking yeah. about with the reels and I trying to minimise flash. Presence. I do not want to say, hello, here I am. Yeah. Um, so natural colour. Natural colour. This is a nice green. olive. It's available in, in a white as well, which yeah. might be helpful, I suppose, for some people visibility wise but for your trip no, no, we're no, going no, not, not for where we're going we're going subtle no. we're going natural colors 
here we are at the, uh, twang the tip department. Wall, the twang <laughs> department, exactly. <laughs> and as you can see, we've got quite a lot for you to choose from. Yeah, I, so. It must be bewildering for a newcomer, actually. But, um, you know, everything with a slightly different purpose. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, th there would be times when I would go for, you know, Maxima over there or, or you know, whatever it is. Um, but so I'm going to ask you the same thing that, that I have with rods and reels and, and okay. line. What would you take for this trip? And Something I've why? got confidence in. Okay. You know that that's that's the presiding thing, and I've always used Grand Max. So and this is the soft plus. Yeah, and it's they've now changed it to Seeger or Seagar or whatever, however they're pronouncing it. And you've got the various. I mean, it says what it says on the tin, really. I mean, you've got the the harder one here, and the soft plus is great for dry flies. Okay. And super for nymphs. And it is incredibly fine by comparison to other fluorocarbons mm. for its diameter. So, so I, why why are you choosing that something with a slightly lower or, or something that's a bit softer, I suppose? Well, there's two um, there's two presiding things. If I can get away with a lower diameter, I can get my flies down there deeper. Yeah. Because there'd be less resistance, and I Tension think I talked about, about that and the grading thing. The other thing too is that I need strength. So yeah. it pushes me up. I, I, might even I mean, what, what sort of size of fish are you expecting? They're not you might, big, you might apparently encounter. they're really powerful and they're not leader shy. So putting me, I, I'm going to be looking at the 13s, the 10s, right, okay. the 8s. And, okay. But these are all I would use in our reservoirs anyway. Mm. So, so something strong enough to land those fish, yeah, but, but not too but stiff. But not too stiff to, to kill the, the presentation. Right, so Charles, we've talked about tackle. Yeah. But another crucial We've thing. Come away for, from tippets and twang. <laughs> and another crucial thing for wherever you're going in the world is to make sure you're properly dressed, properly clothed. Yeah, um, um, I think somewhere like New Zealand, it's even more critical mm. um, because you're a long way away. You can't get things necessarily as easily as you might over here. Yeah. So you could make a really. Big and you'll mistake. be in a remote place within New Zealand yeah, as well. Yeah, up to a point. Although, you know, is anywhere really remote nowadays. Um, but y you're investing a lot in your clothing mm. because if you're comfortable, you'll fish better. Yes. It's as simple as that. Because I know that, um, that there's a lot of there's a big wet wading yeah. culture in yeah, New there Zealand. Is. So, is that what you're going to be doing, or I, will you be taking? I, I don't waders? know. It's the honest answer. I don't know. So I've got to actually weigh up. But you'll go prepared. For I'll go prepared for both, but I expect to wear waders because you, it's a lot of it's glacial water, or yeah. it's coming off the mountains. It's going to be cold. Mm. A friend of mine said it's the only place in the world he's ever got hypothermia. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, I'm, I mean, that's why the, the trout thrive there because yeah, of that. The that, high that cold oxygen, water cold water. So yeah, we've got a whole ray of, of uh, waders behind us. So something breathable. Something breathable. Something that I feel I don't like too baggy. Okay. I like to be able to move, I like a, a good silhouette in the stream. I know that sounds a bit mm, mm. but it's true, you know. Well, it's, all, it's also going to decrease that Absolutely, um, if you've got the pressure on you. wader, you know, it's going to pick up yeah. and, and, you know, it's not going to so be as... A good like, pair of breathable chest good, waders good that fit well. Fit well, make um, sure that they do, mm -hmm. you know, don't go, oh, well, we'll get that one. No, you know, and this is why someone like Sims actually has a whole array of sizes. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you'll find the size that fits you. Get the one that fits you. Not and the I'd one say that to doesn't. anyone doing what you're doing to come in here and, Absolutely. and try them all Absolutely. on and, and I mean, find the size that's you right. You do it with a pair of shoes, you, you know, you test drive a car, why shouldn't you do it with waders? Absolutely. And, and the places that you'll be fishing, are you going to be. Is it going to be easily accessible from where you're staying or from roads? No, that's the thing. But I potentially a lot I mean, of I could be doing walking. a lot of walking. I think that's going to be the thing. And I think that is going to suggest the wading boot that I, I marry yeah. up with whatever I do. Because I may not be wearing waders with it, but I still... You might walk. be wearing just a wet wading yeah, sock and yeah, gravel yeah, guards so, or something. Um, yeah. I think... So what, if, are you, what are you looking for in a boot then, Charles? Something almost trip? like my trainers. Right, okay. Almost. Um, something light. I don't like heavy wading boots anyway. I know a lot of people do. So something... Well, I think there's a... I mean, if, if you're in a very fast-flowing salmon river in Norway with big boulders and stuff, it's yeah. sometimes nice to have that. a bit of extra stability. I'll but, bow to your greater um, knowledge on that. <laughs> well, um, well I, you so know I mean, me and salmon. You can see from what we've got here, I mean, that one is quite a different boot 
to this one that we've yeah. got here. But you mentioned to me a little earlier that this is more the style that, that you're That's looking the for. one I would go for. And, um, you know, that's lovely. I mean, I, I've got weak ankles, so you always mm. go. So that would be brilliant. But but that one's certainly going to be better for walking long distances. But the other thing I would never do is take this into New Zealand. Yeah. Because of that. So in comparison, the one that you picked out here, a bit lighter, a bit um, lighter. less ankle support, there. but it's going to yeah. help be much more comfortable yeah. when you're walking around. And that rubber sole, as yeah. you mentioned. And I can still put some stream cleats and yeah. things in there. Yeah. So, so but avoiding the felt sole because... A didymo. The, that moss like it looked it, it's called rock snot what a nice name <laughs> nice. it is that's what it's called but and it, it does look like that and i've seen it in montana and it's transferred mm. from river to river by wading boots and all the rest yeah. of it so, so it's a biosecurity measure yeah and yeah. it's for that reason i'm taking out fly tying stuff there won't be any fur there won't be any feathers or anything else it'd mm. just be all synthetics well charles thank you for uh coming to that's see cool. us today <laughs> and uh, picking out a few bits and pieces to take with you yeah, to New Zealand. It's, kind of, it's um, all very exciting. A few days to go. Hopefully you come back in well, and let us know how you got on. I'm going to do that and just see if, if my prognosis was right. Yes. You know, who's to say? Well, that's what I think we'll, we'll try and do in a, in a follow-up video when you're back, is we'll, we'll have a look at what you took with you and what uh, what you thought was invaluable yeah. to have down there and or, or what extra you would have taken if you could do I, it again you know let, let's let's bring the, the gear that i've got let's bring it back into store and let's have a look at it and see you know if it was up literally up for task great i think and i'm hoping it will be of course well we wish you luck tight Thank lines you. on your trip Thank Charles. You.